What's up, YouTube fam? We are here at my buddy's private track ranch. So uh, you at home who are thinking, where's that at? Sorry, this one's private. But today, guys, we are going to pit up a $15,000 enduro bike purpose built versus a $5,000, $6,000 GPX 450 FSC 450R to really show you guys the entire difference between something high cost and something low buck. So with that being said, guys, it should be a really fun video. Let me just say straight out of the gate that these are not even comparable. They're not in the same field. One's a two-stroke, one's a four-stroke. One is absolutely purpose-built with the suspension alone costs more than the GPS. So, uh, but we want to see, though, how do these stack up? Let's check it out. All right, boys, special delivery. Let's go. This one, this is Isaac. Uh, this one, Ivan. There we go. And this must be your gloves because they match that. This must be mine. Let's go. Thank you, Thor. As most of you guys know, this is our 2021 and a half GPX FSE 450R. This is one of uh, the newest additions to the channel, coming straight from China. And then today we're going to be putting it up against the 2000 YZ325 purpose-built worst bike on Craigslist. Guys, this is definitely not a fair comparison whatsoever, but let's talk about what do you exactly get for the kind of money that you're willing to put into your machine and who are these bikes best catered to. Let's get into this action. Boys and girls, first ride out, we're gonna try the GPS. I'm gonna go get warmed up on this thing. Tell you what, dude, this Thor gear, I've been missing out. Stuff fits so good. It's gonna be hard for the 325 to beat the GPX. 
So the reason why I started out on this is because this is the last bike I rode. So I'm already adapted to it. And uh, like I already knew what to expect. But guys, this thing rips single track on when the dirt, I mean, look at this dirt guys. Freaking hero dirt. So uh, this is a motocross track here. I might go out there later. There's a ton of people out there right now. But for right now, I'm just gonna stay on the uh, enduro track. I think we should switch over to 325 and put in a couple hot laps on that. Well, that's gonna make today's video a lot harder. What's that? This thing does excellent right now out there. Does it really? Yeah, no like. Sorry, how do you eat sorry? Oh, oh my God. Turn oh. the key. Okay. There you go. Oh God. Green button. Oh, uh, kill switch. Turn, push that button. There you go. Yeah. Let's go grab the 325. Now, of course, I spilled the gas everywhere. That's about normal for me. All right, guys. So, straight out, I know this is just going to be Eon's ladder because this bike, I've never weighed it, but I expect it's around 220. Um, maybe even a little less than that. But, point is, the other one's 260. So, Oh, guys. So, if you guys don't know about the worst bike on Craigslist, go back, check out my other videos where we built this thing. It's a, she's a work of art. And reckless clutch, ready? Oh. All right. We'll try this. There goes Isaac, ripping. Oh yeah, he's loving it. Look at that. Oh, no engine brake. Oh, he keeps ripping that thing. Hand. 
So difference in suspension, obviously, guys. This is a kit off-road uh, triple S KYB. You know, DLC coated, Kashima coated, traveling done by AHM. So what I told him I wanted on this suspension was I wanted more top stroke holdup. And uh, that's what he gave me. This thing has a bunch of holdup up top. Yeah. And uh, the difference is the GPX uses the entire stroke. This one just rides the very top of the stroke. Love it. You I love, love it? Bike. I love this bike. So, give us a background, Isaac. What do you ride right now? Uh, I ride a uh, RM125. Yeah, so he's ridden 450s before. He used to ride my KX250F. And now he's trying the GPX450 FSE. And uh, yeah, I followed you for like a lap. Got some good footage. Uh, one, thing, one thing that got me is it looked like the suspension was right for you. Uh, it was not right. For was me. it too hard? It was too soft. No. Dude, I'm heavier than you. Well, it was too hard then because I felt like I was sinking. Well, that's because look at the sand we're in. That's right. Well, but you're able to, like in the chop up there, you're able to stay on top of the chop. Yeah, I love this bike. I feel like that has really good bottom end. It's, really it's heavy though, huh? It's very heavy, but it's really good bottom end. Like when you're able to like, get on the throttle. Yeah, it's yeah. Did you did you do what I said and just leave it in second the whole time? Yeah. 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 Well, what's cool is like in second on the long straightaways, you can rev it out. Oh yeah. Like rev it out to the very top of the rev limiter, and then by then you're already at the next corner. Yeah. And I like this bike because it's different, but also because like it doesn't bog. It doesn't. No, that fuel injection is pretty spot on. It's pretty spot on, and I feel like that's really it's really good. It's really yeah. Good. Really surprising, huh? Yeah, very surprising. It's surprising. That's how I felt at Hollister. I was like, I know, dude, this I'm is... Like, I was expecting less, but I got a lot more than I was expecting. I know, same here. It'd be nice if this had e-start. What? It'd be nice if this had e-start. I know. Hi. Oops, I'm in gear. I forget all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the brake light comes on you know that's when he's on the brakes China. This is the Wu Tang coronavirus back. All right, I figured out how to change this thing over to mile per hour. By the way, guys, they told me in the forums if you guys uh, are looking to get one of these, there's an awesome forum on Facebook, uh, GPX Pitzer Pro um, Facebook, and uh, those guys are awesome. Been super helpful. But they showed me all you gotta do is click this button. To convert it so you hold in for like a second and it see it says kilometers an hour i don't know if it's camera's flashing or not but anyways turn back to miles per hour easy feels good everything for these bikes and it's true if 
you talk to other people with GPXs and they needed a top end or they needed a, I don't know, any part, any, any part. He has them all in stock. Not to mention, guys, if you ever blow this thing up, the complete engine is $1,500. $1,500, guys. Like, any other Japanese bike, if you blow those things up, you're talking 3000 easy. Uh, this bike, replace the entire motor for $1,500. And then you're back out. Come on, like, and to boot, this thing's is rad. No joke no smoke guys this bike is great for what it does i i'm really just still kind of surprised i took the took the 325 out for about 20 minutes and i got right back on this and it did exactly what i remembered it doing it didn't do anything different it was absolutely rad what you're good what uh did you ride this on the main yeah i took this on the main track can it, can it jump? yeah it could jump yeah Go give it a rip so we want want brutal honesty when you get back yep kickstand kickstand bro so button out key on green button to go <laughs> in gear hey and just put it in second letter e all right I was getting a faithful of Reverend Premix. You better get going. Here comes Aiden. He's going to get you on the GPX. Go, 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 Zayden. Get him. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. E start, E start. Go, Zayden. It's on top of you. You all right? Yeah. Ugh. I tried to go for the inside and Oh, uh, yeah, you pushed. Here comes nine-year-old Ivan on the 65. Here comes GPX. You can see we're hitting some pretty deep ruts or uh, sand whoops it's fun much blast much blast I 
saw you blitz and I'm for sure. All right, I need your 100% unbiased opinion. Like you didn't know me, you didn't know what I did. Someone said, hey, try this bike. What are your thoughts? I would say it flows really nice in the corners and it flows really nice and floors most of the, most of the braking bumps and the whoops and the rollers. Uh huh. It does feel really heavy in the corner sometimes and it like tips over a little bit. Okay, so it gets in. a little top heavy? Yeah. Okay. A little top heavy and then the power's really nice through this track. It's uh, it's not too much. It, it's definitely controllable. Right. It's yeah. Like, it doesn't get out of your hand yeah. and it doesn't yeah get you in a in a situation that you can't handle. Some of the bike er ergonomics, like the front, like the wider tank, is a, is a little weird. Yeah. It's a little hard to grip. Or it's easy to grip, but sometimes like your feet, like kind of, it's hard to grip the sides of it. Yeah. You definitely got to go toes in as much as possible. Yeah. yeah for I sure. That. Um. The bars feel good. Yeah. It's pretty set up for a good rider. I feel like, but I like the clutch. Mm -hmm. It's really nice and easy to pull. I can one, one, one finger, finger it. Um, the brakes are a little soft. Okay. They're not very... I noticed that the front is nice and tight and the rear is a little yeah. spongy. Like I could probably bleed the rear a little. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's all I have to say about it. Cool. Like it, yes or no? Yeah. Would you recommend it, yes or no? Yes. All right. Sick. I'll get one myself. Sick. All right, just do it again. Here comes little flying Ivan on that 65. All right, Bobby, I'm gonna ask the same thing of you that I told Isaac and Zayden, everyone else that's tried it so far, just be completely honest. You're not gonna hurt any feelings, just rip it, have fun. What's up, Bobby Benson, 608? He's gonna go ride the GPX.
park. Now you go down on the right side? Yeah. That's not me. That wasn't me. No. No. It's not on camera? Uh no, not at all. <laughs> I mean you can edit that out, right? Keeping every second of that. I'm I'm putting your Instagram tag in there. Instagram. <laughs> Sorry, bike. Sorry, Clint. So, as you guys saw, Bobby Vincent, uh, he took it down for the first time. He can't even look at the camera, he's so embarrassed. But, uh, all right, so, need your total unbiased opinion, because that's how we're doing it. So, what stood out to you? So, you ride, at, what is that, 1920 CRF? Yeah, it's actually a 1980. 1980 CRF, yeah, 250. CRF 365. Yep. Yeah, it's a ripper. Craigslist special. Super light. But no, right off the bat, obviously you could tell that it's heavy. Yeah. And I definitely over was trying to override it first. Can't do that. Two, so don't show the first couple laps, please. Going up. It might be like the fourth lap. I went down again. Okay. <laughs> it's not here or there. <laughs> but how was like things like the suspension with the weight? I think the suspension was super forgiving. Yeah. I felt like I was coming up on like a, a deep rut and I was like, I, I would clinch. You would tense up for I would it? tense up and be like, oh, this is going to hurt. And oh, I just soaked it up. It felt like it was on a pillow. The power, what would you liken the power to? Because it's not a 450, even though it is a 450. Yeah. It's not 450 like motocross power. It's definitely lacking the top end, but for, for what it is, it's got a lot of torque. I felt like I can go into a rut. Like there was a really nice rut up there and I would just roll into real nice and just use the bottom end torque of it mm -hmm. and just get me out of there. Yeah. It was nice. Like, I'd say the roll on the, the bottom end torque is but Cool. So would you recommend it? Yeah. You would? Okay. I would recommend it for exactly what I said, like beginners, for those that want to ride on a little bit of street, a little bit of dirt, mm -hmm. both at the same time. Yeah. Cool. Sponsored by How is it? Straight out of the gate, guys. A purpose built Yamaha YZ 325. This is an Eddie Sanders 325 motor. All balanced and polished internals. The gears are cryo heated and uh, turned. Polished gears. Uh, Recluse uh, EXP. This is a 3.0. I did a whole review on it. The clutch is amazing. Like I said, AHM, uh, A kit, off road, uh, forks, Phoenix handlebars. No expense was spared on this bike, guys. And it shows four, four strokes. So to me, it shows when you have a purpose built bike, right? You have a purpose built enduro racing bike. The harder I ride this one, it just pumps my arms up. If I hold a pace and really just hold the pace, ride fast. And that is where the camera ran out of batteries. But what I was going on to say is that I found with the 325, if I set a pace and really let uh, myself just kind of gel with a the bike, then I, I didn't even get arm pump. I ended up doing a 25 minute moto and I didn't get arm pump at all. And I was on a really, really hot pace. I have hours and hours of GoPro footage that like literally I couldn't fit into this video. So I just took some key points. And uh, to answer the question, guys, where does 
you know, a $6,000 enduro bike, uh, compare to, um, you know, $15,000, $16,000, um, purpose built enduro bike, it doesn't like, I want you guys to understand kind of the point and purpose of this film is, um, with a lot of money, um, you can obviously build a, a trail purposed, uh, enduro purposed machine for, you know, the sky's the limit. If you got money, the sky's the limit. But luckily I had a lot of really great sponsors that came on and helped to make the worst bike on Craigslist a reality. Um, it's a 2000 YZ250 guys. Like I said, if you, if you don't know the backstory on the 325, go back and check out the worst bike on Craigslist videos. Um, you'll find them in my channel. There's, there's some really cool things that we did that bike but what to take away from this guys is so we had a total of seven different riders uh ride the gpx uh fsc 450r today and um i didn't get interviews with everyone uh because sometimes they would just return the bike and then you know they go on to theirs and go out riding again i'd catch up with them and i'm like i need to get your Response on video, oh yeah, no, until I'll, I'll come back, I think sick, and then, you know, then, you know, they ended up leaving because we're out riding, and anyway, but, you know, for, so I, I wanted to get a little diverse uh, amount of people, like, riding it, so we have my son, who's 14, and a bit of an intermediate rider, knows what he's doing, we had uh, his uh, buddy Zayden try it, I think Zayden's 16, and um again kind of a beginner intermediate rider two different riding styles though um bobby benson who's a, i would say a definite intermediate advanced rider um that has a lot of seat time and knows bikes very well and everyone <clears throat> they, they all thought it was heavy which i mean not gpx not even, is not even trying to hide that right like they're very upfront like hey it's a heavy enduro bike Sure, there's things you can do to lighten them up, and um, there's things you can do to get more power out of them, but my goal with this FSC 450R, guys, is to leave it just bone stock for the entire time that uh, GPX is letting me borrow it, to really uh, put this thing to the test, where does it stack up? Um, so, guys, obviously it didn't stack up against the 325, but that is, come on, like, let's be honest, but what i think where this bike absolutely shines is for the guys who maybe just are not uh they don't want to throw 10 grand plus at a bike and um they want something that's always going to start and ride and be great every time they take it out and this thing it kills sand whoops it does so good and chop the suspension i'm actually really blown away at the suspension like i i love my 325 the ahm suspension like i mean these guys they've They've hooked up all my bikes here, and they're it's the best suspension I've ever had. But you know what? Just talking out of box stock China stuff, like come on, that that was it was too good. Um, gonna be digging into that a little bit more. I found out some information about the uh, front and rear shock on this uh, being WP partial WP product, the bodies and stuff like that. So I'm digging into that a little bit more. I'll have more news for that. But guys, epic day. Uh, I hope you enjoyed at least some of the onboard camera stuff. Um, guys, again, I really appreciate every single one of you guys so much. Um, having a blast doing this. Um, going up to Nevada here in a few days to go find a new house. So, a lot of big changes coming for your old boy, London Mex here. Um, click that Rocky Mountain code down in the description. Supports the channel. Uh, it, it really helps me out a lot. Plus, it gets you your guys' parts um, at a great price from one of the, the leading industry companies that supports moto and supercross and side by sides and four by four quads atvs you name it rocky mountain they hook everyone up so guys use that code down below and uh, support the channel if you guys are on your cell phone device right now you could scroll down a little bit and you can see my teespring collection we have the yamasaki shirt just drop and we have two other shirts getting uh designed right now uh, thank you, Keith Terrier, uh, for, for taking that on. I really appreciate it. Uh, Keith, if you didn't know, he was a big, um, he, he did a lot of the help on the design work with the uh, uh, YX500, uh, KX500 conversion. So, um, anyways, those will be coming out very, very soon. 
I didn't think for a second this was gonna be a short video, and it's not. But hey, it gives you guys something long to watch. I love every single one of you guys. And I will talk to you very, very soon. It's a promise. Peace out for now from the shop. Gotcha, whatever.